Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be recapping some of my experiences from my first semester in the University of Toronto Engineering Science Program. For people that are in or have passed first year, I hope to share a new perspective on the things that I did, as well as what studying was like online during a pandemic. And for those who haven't gone through first year or my university program, you might have the question, what is engineering science like and why did I take it? Let's get started. Grade 12 was going great. I was learning tons of stuff and having fun with all my classmates. For everything was shut down. COVID-19. You'll have to stay home. Shut down measures. Instantly, things stalled. Final exams never really happened, so I never felt like I consolidated a lot of important information. And we had socially distanced pickup of our grad wear and an online graduation ceremony. And then high school was over. With the summer that was supposed to be a summer of freedom being one of total and utter confinement. Then came the first day of classes, and it was exciting, but underwhelming. There was no large lecture hall of 300 or more students, no nervous and excited chatter of people with great potential meeting each other for the first time. Just the dead silence of a Zoom call. As people respectfully waited to not muffle up the audio of our professors. This is going to be a long year. I thought to myself. Let's talk about the program. At the University of Toronto, an NSI does two years of general engineering where you learn everything from maths and physics to civil engineering, material science, electrical engineering, biomedical engineering, and programming, amongst many other courses. And then for years three and four, you specialize and go deep into one thing. I selected this program for three reasons. Firstly, I heard that engineering science was one of the most challenging programs around. Since I always think that the environment that you're in shapes who you become, I wanted to be in that challenging environment. Secondly, I also wanted to learn a range of engineering subjects because I really enjoy learning new things and so that the doors to different fields are open for me. Take a look at Elon Musk for a second. His ability to lead companies in vastly different fields like neuroscience, autonomous vehicles, telecommunications, and space arises from the fact that somewhere he sat down and took the time to learn about the nature of different problems in those fields. The third reason, is for the people, which I'll tell you, making friends when things are online was really difficult. But soon enough, after first semester was over, I was making progress on that front as well because I hosted virtual study sessions where I got to interact with classmates and eventually became really close to some of them. So I joined the program because I knew there would be like-minded people and I wanted to be in an environment where I could work with them and learn from them as well. So what are my courses actually like? First year had two semesters. In first semester, I took Civ 102, a structural engineering course that covers truss design, beams, and concrete. This was an eye-opening course because we walk through buildings and structures on a day-to-day -day basis, but we never really contemplate why they're actually not crumbling under our weight. The TAs in this course were incredibly helpful, and if I could go back in time, I'd tell myself to attend and use TA office hours much more in this course. In the end, however, although this course was challenging, it redefined my perspective regarding structures and also emphasized the importance of safety in engineering design, which is something that has stuck with me. So I'm going to give this course a five out of five. Next, I had PHY 180. This was a physics course that covered classical mechanics. All the lectures in this course were asynchronous and we had Q&A sessions throughout the week. I think this course's content was organized well in the sense it started with high school level material material and then took our understanding of force, momentum, and energy from a single particle system and built it to different frames of references and then transformations between different frames of references. So the content's progression was really uh, intuitive. However, I did struggle in this course because my learning was impacted by the asynchronous lecture format. Some of my classmates love asynchronous things, but I guess I like it when I'm going through dense material in real time with profs and students around me to each their own. This was a course I really wish was in person though, because conducting physics experiments outside a lab, uh, was a big pain. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this course a three out of five. Next came ESC 103 or Engineering Mathematics and Computation. This was the precursor to the linear algebra course we would take in second semester. The main difference between that course and this was uh, we were also being introduced to MATLAB and applied a lot of the linear algebra content we were learning using that software. Not only did we get through a lot of content with our prof delivering content in real time, uh, the tutorials were really helpful and also made room to learn and meet other students through working on solving problems together. This was the only first year course where when I took the midterm or exam, it actually felt like I had enough time to attempt all questions without being rushed. So for an incredible exposition to linear algebra concepts, MATLAB, and a great course experience, I rate this course a five out of five. Next comes ESC 180 or Introduction to Computer Programming, which taught us Python. Everything from variables, conditionals, and loops to processing files, working with matrices, and even a project where we built uh, our own AI that played the board game of Gomuku. There was an autograder that marked our code in midterms and exams, which was a bit 
brutal because if you couldn't successfully debug your code for a problem in time, your entire solution was considered incorrect. But I heard in person before people used to hand write their code. So I'll take a harsh autograder for being able to type out code any day. <laughs> I had a bit of experience in Python before taking this course, but overall, this was a great course to solidify my understanding of Python and basic programming concepts. So I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of five. ESC 194 or Calc 1 comes next. I'm sure a lot of undergraduates around the world can relate to my experience when I say, I entered this class thinking I'd be all right from the stuff I learned from high school and then got slapped with Delta Epsilon proofs and Riemann sums hard. <laughs> Bro, what even is Epsilon? I don't know, man. <laughs> so what did we cover in this course? <sighs> Delta epsilon proofs, limit theorems, continuity theorems, derivative theorems, curve sketching, applications of derivatives, which included related rates and optimizations, formally defining an integral with Riemann sums, tons of integration techniques and tricks, areas and volumes between curves, inverse trig functions, logarithms and exponentials, complex numbers and differential equations. Calc 1 was rewarding, but brutal. We had weekly quizzes, which were decent and helpful for learning content. And some of my favorite TAs come from the Calc course. Thank you for carrying us with your above and beyond explanations. <laughs> but aside from that, tests felt like they were designed to not be completed. And I often needed an hour or two after one of those exams to just recover. <laughs> Anyways, it's worth it because you become better at doing rigorous math. So that's a four out of five for me. Finally, we have Praxis 1. Now, Praxis, Praxis isn't a course. It's, um, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> So this is the course which no NSI can properly explain because you just have to go through it to understand what it is. My best attempt would be to say that Praxis is a course that explores what the engineering design process is while trying to build awareness of your biases and intentionality in the manner you act. If you figured out what that means, <laughs> congratulations. In terms of content, there was a lot. But the one thing that will always stick out to me is the framing, diverging, converging, and representing or FDCR model, which is at the heart of this course. It is something that an entire separate video could be made on uh, in order to explore how engineering design is actually done. Anyways, for online lectures, this course was exceptional. The profs and TAs adapted the course to the online format so well that it actually felt like we were in a lecture hall. And for teaching valuable skills and for making first year much more bearable and exciting, I would have to give this course a five out of five. And that was first semester done. I'll put my thoughts on second semester in another video, along with some insights into the social life uh, and some of the club activities that I partook in during first year. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, chat with me about any of this down in the comments below. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free and you can always unsubscribe. See you in the next one.